that's good. Well, y'all, thank you for inviting me. It's always a great pleasure to be in a room full of Republicans. That's a great thing right there. I thank you. I, I congratulate you on your choice. And again, I, I appreciate the invitation to be here very much. Uh, I, I, my daddy wanted me to go to the Citadel. I ended up, I thought about it for a while and didn't do it. Went to the University of South Carolina and had a, got a good education. But I'll tell you, there's something about the Citadel that's different. I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's unique. I don't know if there's another such place in the whole country where the, the, there's such a bond that is created by the years that you spend here together. And as you know, it's something that you carry with you your whole lifetime. So I congratulate you on your choice of coming to this historic state, this historic city, and also on your choice, on your political choice, is to take in the, I call it the constitutional side or the conservative side of the political equation, political thought. And what I'd like to do is perhaps mention a few things to you and then encourage if anybody's got any questions, that's usually the best part of something like this, to see what's on your mind. But I'll tell you what, from what I see, a couple of things. One is that we are in a great position in South Carolina. How many, how many of you are, are South Carolinians? If you put up, oh, that's, that's not everybody, but that's well. You're lucky. Uh, those of you who were born here who are natives, that's great. Those of you who come here for education, that's great. But I'll tell you this, there's not a better place in the whole world to be than there is right now. And I say that from the point of view of somebody who's had the opportunity to talk to people from all over the world that are coming to look to invest millions, billions, hundreds of millions, multiple billions of dollars into business operations anywhere in the whole country, anywhere in the whole world, and where are they coming? They're coming to South Carolina. And that's a remarkable thing. And as was mentioned, I, I served as U.S. Attorney under Ronald Reagan and got, got a little bit of a, a look at the world then from a different point of view. Most people don't have a chance to do that. And then again as Attorney General of, of, of the state here for for eight years where we did, one of the things we did was Operation Jackpot. Boy, that was a that was a great story. There had been one book written about it, probably be a movie. It's a very exciting story. It's all about collaboration and cooperation. We just put together a team and had some new ideas and caught a, caught a lot of criminals. But uh, also as Lieutenant Governor and as, as Governor for a while, I've had a position to see things that a lot of people don't get to see. And often we don't see ourselves as others see us. But I can tell you this, these people from around the world that are looking to invest a lot of money, and they're very careful. They don't want to throw it away. They don't want to make a mistake. They make a mistake in the investment. What happens? The company goes down. Not only do they lose their jobs, but everybody working for the company could lose their jobs. But where are they coming? They're coming to South Carolina. Well, why is that? Why are they all coming to South Carolina? As you know, we've had recent big announcements, and we've got plenty big more coming. But all these big companies, we have 160 German companies in South Carolina, for example. Volvo just opened up not long ago, and they've already decided to expand even before they have the first building built. Up in Greer, between Spartanburg and Greenville, the BMW plant puts out a brand new BMW every 61.7 seconds. Every 61, so there are plenty of them. Save your money. They'll be building plenty of them for you. But that is a remarkable thing that these companies, Samsung from uh, South Korea is coming here. Uh, as I mentioned Volvo from Sweden. They're all in these big tire companies from Japan, GT Tire, they come in here. And you know what they tell me? They say, well, it's because of a lot of things. It's because South Carolina has great research universities, MUSC, Carolina, and Clemson that work together in research and can essentially be the research department for these companies because you have these young, bright minds that want to go into these areas and these companies are looking for research. So they get together and that's a collaboration that produces more and more inventions and innovations and jobs and happiness. But also it's the strength of the four-year schools, this being one of them and this being a military school on top of that. That's that puts you, in a, as you know, in a different sort of a category, and that category is a good category. And by the way, the, the military strength and the 
the military tradition in South Carolina is something that always weighs high because that means people know what to do, they do their job, they are, they're disciplined, they're structured, and all these companies, they're always looking for veterans to come to work for them or people who've been in a military environment because they, they are a cut above your, your, ordinary, your ordinary worker. Well, what else do we have besides research university? We have the best technical college system in the whole United States. It was started in 1961. Now we have 16 of them. And in, in hours and hours alone in the state of South Carolina, if there's a company somewhere in the world and they're thinking about going to somewhere in the United States, there's one state that has a system. It's called our technical college system where they, they will send a group of people to that company in that foreign country to learn their traditions, to learn their patterns of behavior, to learn about the machines, whether it's robots or otherwise, and they will design a curriculum right here in South Carolina at the Technical College School to teach our people how to do those things for free if that company will come here, and we're doing it now. We're the only one in the whole country that does that. And gentlemen, ladies, let me tell you, those jobs in those, in those plants now, you could eat off the floor People don't carry toolboxes anymore. They carry laptops, and they pay a whole lot of money. And you'd be surprised at the, the high-tech, sophisticated type of work that's going on. And then they're paying people that go to work in, in those sophisticated places. If they've got a technical college degree, that's, a, that's what you need to, for a lot of those jobs, a four-year degree openings as well. She can make seventy-five, one hundred thousand dollars in just a few years, and, and we got twenty-two-year-olds buying houses in South Carolina, getting married, and starting family. Well, what else we have? We have a great port, one of the greatest in the country, the Port of Charleston. And in just a few years, the Port of Charleston and the Port of New York, New Jersey, will be the dominant ports on the Atlantic coast. In addition to that, we got something nobody else has got. We got a rail line going from two of them, from the Port of Charleston. One goes across eighty-five up in Grib, between Spartanburg and Greenville, and on out. And another one, we're building a port, an inland port, where truckers on I-95 can stop in Dillon County and put their, put their trailers, put the containers on the train, and it'll come down, CSX will bring it to the port. No other state in the country has got that. And it goes on and on. We've got plenty of power. We've got a, the lowest union participation in the whole country, of any state in the whole country. And that's because here we pay well, we treat employees well, and people are happy, and we get along and we work together, and there's, the demand for a need for a union is, is not here like it is in some other places. But also we have the mountains, the beaches, the oceans, all of that, ocean, the great Atlantic, and also up on the other side of the state we have the, have the mountains, all the streams, all of the history that goes all the way back to this place in 1670, all these things that you just don't find in other places. Remember when we started out, we were one of the colonies, and people out west, they are relative newcomers to the country. But here's the interesting thing to me, is every one of these big companies that I've talked to, every one of them, have said in one way or another that the single thing that sold them on coming to this state, South Carolina, is the people. They said South Carolina is a handshake state. I repeat, South Carolina is a handshake state. What do you mean, sir? If somebody in South Carolina, a man or woman in South Carolina, gives you their word, they will keep it. They say, we do things. We operate on handshakes in one place, South Carolina. And that's why they're coming. So, ladies, gentlemen, I'll tell you, there's plenty of good work coming. What we have to do is stay conservative in the way we use our government. And that takes me to the Constitution, which is what I'll speak about momentarily, and then we'll see if you have any questions. You, you can't go wrong if you follow this Constitution. Matter of fact, I say the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution of the United States, and the Bible are all you need. If you've got to have three documents, you have those three, and you'll be okay, because you can find everything you need in there. But this Constitution is a great document. There's not another one like it in the whole world. I read it, when I read it, I find new things I didn't know were in there before, didn't understand the meaning. I carry it around with me just to, just to look at it, to look things up when people say things. But imagine this. Here we were, we had, the king was telling us what to do. 
And you, you remember from uh, your readings of history, the king was all powerful. Just imagine any, any king off with his head. There's no law, no nothing. Well, that evolved over a, a while. And, of course, we were colonies over here. We decided we didn't want to be under the rule of the king. So we've, it, as we succeeded on, we, the colonies became states. And then the states, we had a revolution as colonies. And we left, left England. And then we formed the states. And then the states got together and said, we need, there's certain things that we need to do together. Everything else we'll do on our own. So we formed a very a limited government by this Constitution, the purpose of which was to protect us from the national government. That's the purpose of this, to give it very limited powers, the rest to be left to the states. And that's one, one point that a lot of our friends on the other side, on the left, or the liberal side, the left is probably more accurate, that's what they, they misunderstand, is the purpose of the, of the Constitution is not to give a government the national government, the power to run everything and to run to tell the states what to do. The purpose of the Constitution is to establish a national government with very strict limits so that the states can have the control and the people, of course, control the states. If we keep that in mind, then this economic prosperity that we are on the edge of here in South Carolina is just going to blossom and bloom. But what I'm trying to do, I'll finish with this, what I'm trying to do is keep taxes low, keep your own money. What I want for South Carolina is bigger paychecks and more of them. Because when you have bigger paychecks and more of them, more people are working, people are happy, a lot of our problems go away. Domestic violence goes down, drug usage goes down, criminal activity goes down, marriages go up, divorces go down, everything gets better. There's money for education, there's money for roads, there's money for everything. If you keep those taxes low, keep the regulations off the businesses, and that way the people will have jobs. They can do what they want to do. Men and women get up in the morning. They'll be happy to go to work because they can make a good living doing something they want to do, whether it's with their brains, whether it's with their hands, or whether it's with the hands and their brains, as it is in a lot of these big plants. So I'll tell you, 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 you're the lucky ones. Not only are you in South Carolina, which is the greatest place on earth, but you're also at the Citadel. There's no finer institution in the country, and that's a very strong combination. So I thank you for your choice of, of the conservative approach to government, your support of the Constitution of the United States, your understanding of the Declaration of Independence, and your choice to be here at the Citadel. And now I will be happy to answer any questions that anybody has, and please don't be shy. Thank you very much. So we only have time for a couple questions. If you have a question, please raise um, your hand, and we'll bring you a mic. And if anybody wants to know, the little bulldog puppy is eight months old, and he's doing just fine. I'm going to bring him down here one day. Good to hear. Morning, Governor. Um, I have a question based off of our education. Um, I agree with you that all of these companies are coming here because we have the greatest citizens in the country. Uh, there's no doubt about that in my mind. And a key to that and what workforces are made up of are educated individuals. And while that is all, with college graduate, it also needs to be focused around high school graduates as well because not everyone goes to college. So. My question for you is, education's critical for our state's uh, economic success, but South Carolina's facing an uh, unprecedented teacher shortage right now, with uh, so many teachers retiring and not quite as many in-state planning to go to the, to the education field. Uh, what would you say uh, our um, solution for this should be? You're right. If, if we don't teach... If we don't have a good education system, then we, we're not going to get to the top. And, and we're at the top economically now. And we, I mean, we're really, we're launched, but we will run out of fuel if we don't do something to produce a better education system, particularly for, for the young people. So now I, I'll tell you, I'm open for ideas on how to do that. But I believe that we need more choices in education. 
And I, I, I believe, that, and I think you do too, there's nothing like a good teacher. I mean, you can, you can try to learn it all yourself by walking around the earth and reading books and experimenting, but a teacher can save you a whole lot of time because they've already got a lot of mileage on them seeing things, and that's what teaching is already about, to tell you what you go run into, how things work. So a good teacher is a marvelous, marvelous thing, and we're losing some of our good teachers. We also have some that probably need to be, need to be moving on and probably go, need to do something else. But we have a lot of students who, who, who are not getting the kind of attention that we want them to get. So I believe in school choice. I think that the charter school programs that exist around the country have produced magnificent, startling results in some cases. A school opened up in Goose Creek. It was a, a charter school. A, a man, an elderly man, gave them money, gave them three million dollars to, to build the building. And now they're, this charter school company, it's a for-profit company, is running the school on the money that goes to each child. As you know, there's a county, it's different, different uh, amount of money comes from the state to go per capita to the children that uh, goes, follows with them when they, when they go to the school. And they, they started off, I don't remember how many students they had when they started, but they, they had about 25% more applications than they had room. And that's what happens every time we have a, a good charter school open. School choice, magnet schools, private schools, the, but the public school is where most of the, most of the young people go, and so we, we have to work on it. And I think part of that is, is ensuring that we have the very best teachers and principals. Here's a little fact for you. Now, I didn't know this until a few hours ago. I went to a celebration at Chapin High School in, outside of North of Columbia towards, towards um, Lake Murray, and there's a man named Akeel Ross, who is the principal, and he just won the National Principal of the Nation Award. National principal of, of the national principal, best principal in the nation. And I found out we had, we won the similar award in 2002 and won it in 2010, and now we won it again in 2017. South Carolina, they don't give but one a year. So we got some good teachers. But teaching, running a school is just like running a business. You have to have good leaders. You have to have inspirational leaders. And I wish you could have seen them up there at Chapin High School. I mean, it was, it, it was hard to sit still with the, the passion and the excitement and the, uh, looking at the figures to see that the learning is going on. So there's a lot of leadership. They, you learn about leadership here. There's a lot of leadership necessary in the, in the public schools as well as the other schools. So th those are my ideas, those are my approaches, but I don't have all the answers. I'm looking for answers. Every time I get a chance to make a, a talk to anybody, I say, tell people, I'm serious about it. If you've got an idea on how we can do something better, whether it's taxes, regulations, education, the environment, anything, let, let us know about it. I hope that answers the question a little bit. Follow up. Yes, sir, thank you. Another one. However, we would like to proceed with the, uh, with the patch ceremony. Um, so let's give the governor another round of applause.